Hello and welcome to Frank's School. My shoulder's working again. I can actually lift it enough to write. I had to stop for a while. That happens. This is the sixth year of Frank's School, the 35th day, first video. And I'm going to start a series. I don't know how long it'll be. I don't think too long, but I'm going to deal with the subject of water wheels. Uh, water wheels 101, that's what this would be. Uh, because, you know, here's sort of the basic information that, that anyone who ever had much interest in water wheels finds out about this stuff especially. Um, this is the season of the spring runoff. Here where I live, it, it really, it's like there's a wet season and a dry season. And for about, uh, sometimes March, April, May, and then June, sometimes four months, sometimes into July, Water is coming off the mountain in enough amount to at least make it fun to turn water wheels. But then uh, by August it gets dry and it often stays dry through the fall, freezes up in the winter. So this is a seasonal uh, uh, event to, to deal with water wheels. <coughs> uh, I, I have your sea water love. In the course, I made a playlist at one point, I think it's maybe 10 videos long, where I dealt with my own sort of personal love of water. Um, and, and so I even went back and looked at that to see if I had dealt with water wheels, but I didn't really specifically deal with water wheels. So this will be a, a different playlist. I was gonna say something else. Oh, I know what I was gonna say about that. Last year, a little later than this, right at the end of this season, I hurriedly built a section of a, of a head race uh, to, to see what I could do about directing water toward a wheel. And I just built several sections, and sure enough, I could get the water to go and drip off the end. But I knew the season was going to end. Well, see, now I have that, and so when the season came back around, I have them, and the water's pouring out uh, of them, and, and I figured out how I'm going to build them. So I got that part done. Here on Frank's School, so much is seasonal, uh, and I'll work on something until the season ends, and then it basically has to sit there and wait uh, until the season comes around again. I mean, the, the entire school really is like that. All right, water wheels. Now, different kinds of water wheels. If you deal with them by weight, the weight of the water, it, weight is always there. I mean, it, it's what makes water power possible, but when it's weight, on the wheel. Then you, then the term for the, the part of the wheel that holds the water, those are called buckets. Uh, when it's impact, they're called veins. But anyway, uh, if, you're, if your wheel is, is vertical, well I guess, I guess the wheels are always vertical when, when, it, when it's weight. You, no, you, you wouldn't really have a, hor a horizontal wheel. Well, there's the overshot wheel, where here's the wheel, and the water goes over the top. That's the overshot wheel. It's like everybody's favorite, I think, because you, you see the water uh, usually falling off here, and it's the most efficient of these kinds right here. Uh, there's the undershot, where here's the wheel, and the water goes underneath like that, and on its way. Well, the fall isn't nearly as great, and, and as I say there, you know, I, I used to even wonder, why would anyone build an undershot wheel? Well, there's, there's absolutely reasons to build an undershot wheel. If you don't have a very high fall, but you've got a lot of water, you, you want a, an undershot wheel. A breast wheel is really like an undershot wheel, except that the water comes, comes up about here, there or higher, breast height or higher. And for them to work very well, they have to be, let me call it shrouded. I should use it right now. Shrouded or uh, cowled. Maybe, maybe the better word would be cowl. Cowl. Uh, to keep the water tight up against the buckets. Uh, these usually have no cowl. That's one of the reasons why people like them. They, you know, you, you see everything. Although, later on I'll maybe explain that I think a cowl could be introduced to keep that water on the wheel further around so it doesn't fall away and is wasted. Uh, I'll, I'll deal with that later on. But now these are commonly known, uh, books will have them. Pitchback is not so well known. Pitchback is like an overshot. The water comes there, but then 
uh, it is forced to go back. So, so it's not allowed to fall over the front. It falls over the back, and uh, uh, and so the wheel ends up going in in, in this direction. Uh, there are reasons for that too. I think for one. You don't have all this water falling out where it will freeze and blow all over the place in the wind. You have it against your your uh, breastwork, you might call it, uh, or inside the building. But anyway, all right, there's vertical. Now, wheels can also spin horizontally. Uh, or no, no, well, wait a minute. If you deal by impact, not, not so much weight, but the, but the force of the water having come down uh, something and then hitting that wheel, then if you've got vertical ones, uh, you, you talk about veins. So, uh, and, and a flutter wheel is very crude. Um, they, they, they built them here, at least here in the United States. Uh, originally, they were like the very first ones. It's almost like a log with boards uh, mortised right into the log. So there's no spokes or anything. The water just hits the board that's mortised into the log and it turns. That's a flutter wheel. And it, that was the force of the water would do that. Somewhere I have an illustration of one. I might get it out and try to show you later on, but not very well known. Uh, the Norwegian, uh, I think of it as a Norwegian wheel or an Alpine wheel where, where there's so much fall of water and there's so much water available that they don't have to go to all this bother. They can use the force of it. And uh, in the one, in the documentary, The History of Water, or A Journey Through the History of Water, made in Norway, there's one section, I tried to find if I, see if it was on YouTube where I could give you the link, but I, I couldn't exactly find it. But if you search, you can find these. If you would look up Norwegian, uh, up and down sawmill, water powered. If you put those in there, you'll see something like it. But that particular one you don't see, and it's so well filmed. There the water hits this, uh, this fairly small water wheel. It's got, it's, it's, its veins are really, or buckets, are just like boxes. They're not even sloped. Usually you want to have your veins sloped, and, and, and I'll, whoops, it would be this way. Uh, so that they hold the water as long as possible before spilling all of it out. Uh, in this case, the veins would be like that, or the buckets. Uh, well, it's just a box and, and, uh, <laughs> that I remember, and the water hitting it is enough to run that up and down some of it. It's pretty neat. Uh, so there's that one. Now, these are vertical. A horizontal one, they're called a tub mill, or they, and they were common here, or yeah, I'd say they were probably common here in the United States where it goes like this, and the water hits it on the one side. And in Portugal, that's standard. Uh, matter of fact, if you look up Portuguese water wheel, uh, you may immediately see one of these. They're, they're just the standard way. I suppose they, well, even where there's a fall of water, they're certainly easy. For one thing, if you're going to turn a, a millstone, you don't need any gearing it's just a shaft and the bottom is being pushed by the water and the top has got the runner stone on it and you can just directly grind your grain. And now see, I should explain. I'm going to take you uh, to some places in Europe, pretty much in Europe, not so sure about the United States, to see some of these examples that I've seen before. So I'll take you on a tour and then ultimately I'll take you on a tour around the farm to, to show you what I'm doing. All right, now, if you have water wheels that actually contain the water and it's full, that's called a penstock. And the penstock um, has got to be strong. <laughs> and the result of the penstock, then, is a nozzle. You know that double Z almost certainly indicates that that's an Arabic word, and I think it is. Uh, I mean, the Arabs, the Persians, even before the Romans, I think. Well, the Persians, I'd say maybe before the Romans, they really loved their water and did a lot with water. Anyway, it's got a nozzle, and it's well suited for high speed, because it, it can, I mean, of course any of this stuff could be dangerous, I suppose, because you've got a lot of torque there, but the speed of these is slow, maybe 10 RPM, maybe 15 RPM for, for most of these water wheels. 
um, maybe higher for higher for these. But these are really fast. And that the, some of these pen pen stocks, you see them in in uh, Switzerland, for example. They may be oh, they may be a hundred yards high, maybe four hundred yards high, and steel strong. Uh, and I'll I'll show you uh, some of them too. I'll find it. I'll deal with them later. But anyway, they're for high speed. And the peak of the development with this was a it's called a Pelton wheel. Pelton wheel. And a lot of people they just just like overshots are their favorites. Peltons are their favorites because they're so efficient. They they reach the maximum efficiency really available. Uh, they found a guy named Pelton found that when his wheel got crooked, it actually went faster. And it was because he figured out that the water impacting the spoons or buckets or veins, uh, it, it was better than hit right in the middle. It was to hit on the side. Then they doubled it, so it was splitting on both sides and put a sharp little thing in here to break the, or to, to get through the, the blast. And, and then it, it contained the whole thing. These have to have, these have to have a shroud or a cowl, otherwise water just sprays everywhere. Uh, so Pelton wheel, uh, they, they are really cool and I'll tell you more about them I think later because I want to go kind of fast. Now then you get the turbines. A turbine it has, by definition, has got water coming from the whole way around the wheel. Uh, either either inflow or, or inflow or outflow going down through the turbine. And now we're uh, really getting high in RPM, high in efficiency, and hydroelectric power plants, they're gonna be using some form of a turbine. All right, nozzle, or I mean norias. Norias are specialty, back to the slow ones. They, uh, they are a water wheel with, uh, with water jugs attached on the A side or both sides, so that the force of the water lifts other water up high enough to dump into a trough and uh, and send it on its way to the fields. Those are norias. They're kind of like a specialty. All right, let's see. Head race, that's the water coming. It's also sometimes called a mill race or a sluice. This is vocabulary for the a tail race. There's where the water's running away. A turnout is a way to shut the thing down. So, so you can turn the water out up in the head race or the sluice so it doesn't go over the wheel. Uh, I haven't yet seen a successful governor on this kind of a wheel, uh, but I have on on turbines. Uh, uh, well, sure, you've got to have them. Uh, anyway, tail race, a turnout, bearings, you've got to have bearings. Uh, a lot of times in the old days they were stone. They were actually ste uh, uh, cast iron, or iron on stone. That was the bearing. Soapstone was great because it had, it was really smooth. Granite believe it or not, was, was a bearing. You've got to have some way to take that slow RPM and to use it, usually speed it up. And I call that a bull gear. Sometimes it was right on the side of the wheel, or sometimes the shaft then directly turned a, 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 a gear itself. And of course, in the old days, they were wooden teeth and wooden, uh, yeah, wooden teeth and lantern gears, which were fine. I mean, they worked just fine. I think the same thing, well, it can be done with a belt, it may be even rope drive, but you've got to have some kind of way to gear it. And if it's vertical, a lot of times you, if for grinding grain, you want it horizontal, so you've got to switch the direction as well. And I mentioned that uh, some of these need to be shrouded or cowled, a cowl built around it one way or another. All right, I've introduced the subject that's been kind of fast, I know, but I'm going to go on with this. Bye for now.